Hi friends, welcome to Time Python series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the Flask Python module to build web applications. So Flask is a Python library for creating web applications very easily and quickly. So some of the use cases for building web applications with Flask can be, Flask is one of the best ways to build simple web interfaces for Python applications. Suppose you want to create a HTTP web service that requires pandas, numpy, etc. Then it's easy to write your server in Python. And Flask is an option to create web services very easily in Python. So how do we install Flask? Just open a command prompt and run python -m pip install Flask. So let's open a command prompt now. And let's try to type the command python -m pip install Flask. Now you can see Flask is installed in my Python environment. All right, let's get started with coding and create a very simple Flask server. I'm gonna take a blank folder and I'm gonna open it with VS Code. I'll create a new file and I'll name it index.py. And to create a Flask web application, let's try to import Flask. So I'll just write from Flask, import Flask. So I'm importing the Flask class from the Flask module. And now I have to create an instance of a web server. So I'll just write app equal to Flask. And here you gotta give some name to the application. So I'll just give underscore underscore name. So it's like the package name and that's it. Now I've got an instance of a Flask web server in this variable called app. All right, now that we have created a server, let's try to create an endpoint. And by calling to that endpoint, we should get some content. So let's try to create an endpoint that just gives us hello world text. So to create an endpoint easily, you can just write a Python function. So I'll just write df home and this function will return content return hello world so this function just returns plain text which is hello world but how do we say this function is an endpoint for that you can use the app dot route decorator so i'll just write at the rate app dot route and here i'll specify the route for which this function will respond so i'll write route slash that means when your application path is just a slash or nothing this function will be triggered and hello world will be written so this at the rate app dot route is basically python decorator syntax and to convert the function as the server's endpoint you have to use the app.route decorator now when we call a empty path or slash of a web server you will get the hello world but still our server is not listening to the request so we have to write app.run and you have to specify the host name so I'll write host equal to 0.0.0, .0. port so you have to write any port so i will just write a port called 5000 you can write any free port and you can write debug equal to true and what debug equal to true does is that it will enable easy debugging and it will show you all the server variables and parameters. So it's advised not to use debug equal to true in production. And that's it. Your server is now listening to requests on the host 0.0.0, .0 and port 5000 and the debug mode is on. Host equal to 0.0.0, .0 means you can write local host or your computer's IP address, etc. Now we have a server ready in very less lines of code. And if you call the server's slash URL point, you should get a hello world text in return. So let me try to save it and run this index.py. And here in the console, you can see running on 0.0.0, .0 colon 500. So let me try to open my browser now and type localhost 500. And let me try to enter. And here you can see hello world is printed out. Now if I change this root to slash hello instead of slash and save it, you can see the server is restarted by detecting the changes in the Python file. And now if I call slash, I should get an error and if I call slash hello I should get hello world so let me try to reload this and see here you can see the URL is not found but if I write localhost 1500 slash hello and you got hello world because I have changed the root and telling that the server should listen at the hello endpoint and this function should be triggered so this is the basic routing of endpoints to a flask web server using this app.route python decorator so if I want to write multiple routes I'll just copy paste this, copy this and paste this in a new line and obviously I have to change the function name because I should not have two same function names. So I'll just write hi. So this is another function and I'll change the root from hello to hi and I'll just return some other content like hi there. And now you got two endpoints of your Flask web server. One is listening at the road called hello and one is listening at the road called hi and both are reading text contents. So I've saved it and that's why the changes are detected. And let me try to reload this server again. And you can see at the endpoint called hello, you got hello world. And if I write the endpoint called hi, you can see hi there. All right, let's try to change this hi to slash again. That means, so if I just write localhost 1500, I'll get hi there. 
And now instead of returning plain text, let me try to return HTML. You see, if I just reload this page and see what I got in response, you just got text called hi there. But if you get HTML in place of this text, you can show a user interface like links, buttons, etc. So let's try to do that now. So instead of returning hi there as a text, I want to return some HTML text. So I'll just write HTML and inside the HTML, I'll just create a body. And inside the body, I'll just create a H2 tag, which is a heading and I'll write hi there. And after the H2 tag, I'll just create a link. And after the link, I'll just create a small button. And let me try to write a multi-line string using triple inverted commas. And now I can span my string in different lines. All right, instead of returning text, now I'm returning HTML in the response. So let me try to reload this again. I got HTML content and if I just go to the page source in the response, you can see my HTML which I've written through my flask function. And here you can see the HTML is rendered by the browser. So if I just click go to Google, you can open the Google and this is a dummy blog button which I have created in the flask response. So this way, just instead of text, you can return HTML and the browser can render it as web content. All right, you can see the problem here. Instead of writing HTML in this Python script, I can write HTML in a HTML file, right? But how can I serve that HTML file from this Python function? Further, Flask has a very elegant solution called templates. So inside the folder where you have the server's Python file, create a new folder and just name it templates. And inside the templates folder, you can create any HTML file. So I'll just create a HTML file called home. I'll just create a new file and I'll just name it home html and inside this home.html i will transfer all this string to that html file and i'll just do the formatting here so now i got my home.html and i have to render this home.html from this function further flask has a very easy function called render template and using render template i can render a template file in my response so instead of returning string i'll just write render template and i'll be the path of my html file the HTML file is home.html inside the templates folder. So I'll just write home.html here, save it. And just to make difference in the output, I'll just write hi there. Instead of hi there, I'll just write hello there and save it and save my index file again. So that my server restarts and here I'll just restart here. You can see hello there and I'm not returning the HTML from my function. I'm returning the HTML from this HTML template. All right. Now we've understood how to display static content using the render template. But what if I want to show some Python variables in my templates? How can I do that? So the problem statement is to transfer the variable values from my Python file into this HTML file. And the very easy solution to do that is by using Jinja templating. So Flask supports Jinja templating out of the box. That means you can render your server variables inside the HTML templates. Inside this render template function, you can use named parameters to transfer your Python objects into the templates. So I'll just create a name parameter called user equal to and I'll make it an object. And inside this object, I will give two attributes, name and city. So that's it. Just by giving a named input to this render template function, I have injected the user variable into this home.html template. So I can use this variable inside the home.html for rendering. So let's try to do that now. Inside my home.html, instead of writing hello there, I will just render the username. So here instead of there, I have to use the Jinja2 rendering syntax. So to render a variable value, I'll just use the double brackets. And inside these double brackets, I can write the variable values. So since my variable name was user, I'll just write user dot and the attribute name was name. So user dot name. So user dot name, I have to get ABC rendered in my result. So I'll just save it now and save my index.py so that my server restarts again. And in the output, I'll just reload it and you can see hello ABCD. But in my template, I don't have ABCD. I've got user.name rendered in Jinja2 syntax. So this way you can see it's really easy to do server-side rendering using Flask. So .html doesn't give syntax highlighting of Jinja2 templating. So I'll just rename this file as home.html dot j2 j2 is jinja2 templates so once you change this you can see syntax highlighting of the user dot name so basically it's just html and you will insert jinja2 variables using jinja2 templating syntax something like this and here you can see the language mode as jinja html 
so if syntax highlighting of jinja2 or dot j2 extension files is not supported in your vs code something like this at the bottom right just go to the extensions and install an extension called better jinja so this is jinja template highlighting and here you can see in html you can highlight your jinja syntax and that's happened in our example also all right let's try to render another line and render the user city so I'll write the city is user dot city you can write user dot city or you can create a brackets and inside that you can write user dot city so both of these syntaxes are valid because it's just accessing a python variable and rendering it in html using jinja2 syntax so let me try to save it and save my index.py again so that my server restarts and go to the browser and reload i've got an exception called home.html not found because the file is renamed as home.html.j2 so let me try to change my render template input as home.html.j2 and save it and again run this and you got the cities xyz but in the template i don't have xyz i got user of city so that's how easily you can render server variables inside the templates and one more thing is that you can insert multiple variables into jinja templates so i've got a variable here called user so let me try to insert a new variable into this template so i'll just write data equal to 1 2 3 4 so it's just a simple variable called data and i've injected data into this render template so in my home.html i can use that variable called data let's think it's the number of page views so i'll just write a small span tag and here i'll write number of views is i'll render the variable called data here so let me save it and save index.py again so that our server restarts and go to the output and reload it here you can see number of views is one two three four so this way you can render multiple python variables just by providing multiple named inputs to this render template function of flask so that's it guys this is an introduction of flask python module in this video we got to know how to create a simple flask server how to create server routes so that we can map multiple functions to the server routes and how to render text, how to render templates and how to inject server variables into the HTML templates using Jinja2 templating. You can see I've created a blog post on introduction to Flask Python module for creating web applications. I've also given you the source code so that you can practice it in your own computer. I've also given a reference to the Flask official documentation where you can have a quick start of using flask this is a very great documentation and just by reading this quick start documentation you can easily learn how to use flask please provide your valuable feedback or questions in the comment section hope you like this video guys thank you for watching